Dear Madam Tichanouskaya, Excellencies, esteemed members of parliament, dear guests, partners, and friends of the Helmut Schmidt Foundation. Six years ago, exactly on this day, former Chancellor Helmut Schmidt died at the age of 96. For the Helmut Schmidt Foundation established in his name, this day therefore provides a fitting opportunity to honor his services to our democracy in Germany and as well in Europe, and his strong commitment to international cooperation with the new Helmut Schmidt Lecture. People in Belarus have shown us what it means to really live democracy. We at the Bundeskanzler Helmut Schmidt Stiftung could thus not be prouder to have one of the most inspiring global voices for democracy as in your inaugural speaker of Helmut Schmidt Lecture, Svetlana Tichanouskaya. <laughs> The story of the Belarusian protest is a vivid uh, example of uh, living democracy. That is the topic of my lecture here today. After almost three decades of authoritarian rule, Belarusians have found courage to fight for freedom and a better democratic future. You know, what is often taken for granted here in Germany and Europe, thousands of Belarusians, have to fight for every day. Freedom. Freedom to vote. Freedom to protest. Freedom to exercise the profession you like. Freedom not to end up in detention center after a peaceful demonstration. Freedom to be safe in the streets of your city. Freedom to go on strike. Freedom to elect our own leader. And freedom to be alive. But fight in Belarus is not just about Belarus. It's about the future of democracy in Europe. And we need more bold action for democracy. You have a very impressive program here in Berlin. Uh, yesterday started already, today and tomorrow. You're seeing the, the president, you're seeing the next, the probably next chancellor. Uh, and all kind of people from the parties and governments. What exactly do you expect from the next German government? Uh, first of all, I want new government to keep Belarus as priority in their foreign policy. Because what's going on in Belarus is not only about our country, it's again about democracy in, in the whole region. Uh, to raise awareness about country, maybe to uh, be leaders, be, be leader for other countries. You know how to uh, how to put pressure, political pressure, economic pressure, uh, diplomatic pressure on the regime, because other countries are watching you, follow you. You're living with your children in exile in Lithuania, in Vilnius. Uh, your husband is in jail. You and your family have been threatened. You had to leave Belarus because of those threats. Can you give us an idea where you take the strength from to continue this fight? You know, I have to say that uh, I just have no choice. And uh, waking up uh, in the morning Sometimes it's really, I'm really exhausted and uh, lack of strength. I, sometimes I think, look, I can't endure this anymore. It's too difficult, uh, especially when bad news from Belarus. But you coming back to those, uh, to our friends, to our beloved who are in jail, you understand that you can wake up, take a shower, have a cup of coffee, you'll go to your team, we are supporting each other, but my husband can't. Masha can't, uh, you know, uh, take shower uh, uh, every day. Shower only once, uh, once a week. They can't have normal food. They can't have uh, medicine care there. And you understand you have no right now to say, I can't do this anymore. My anger 
is transforming into strength. Support from Belarusian people is transforming, is transforming uh, into uh, strength. Support of and solidarity of uh, uh, international society is transforming into strength. I will have rest, but later, together with my husband, together with uh, thousands of people who will be free. Who's helping you? Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for what you have done and what you're doing. Thank you very much for coming here. I think you have a lot of supporters here and people who wish you and your family all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.